In 1997, McFarlane Toys released Series 8 of their popular Spawn action figures, adding six new characters to the line. As usual, there were two new variations of Spawn, but they also introduced the Gatekeeper and the Gravedigger. And today, we'll be taking a look at the Gravedigger, here on Creed's Collection. Welcome to another episode of Creed's Collection and the return of the four weeks of Halloween. Today we are taking a look at Gravedigger from the 1997 Spawn Toy Line by McFarlane Toys. Of course in the box you do get the Gravedigger himself, his little minions, and a ton of gear back here behind him. Here on the back of the box you can see all the figures in Series 8 as well as several other lines and the Gravedigger's file card, which we'll get to in a little bit. But now it's time to gut this package and get the Gravedigger out. After all, he's only been waiting 24 years for me to open him, so I think it's about time. And there he is, the Gravedigger and all his little minions. <laughs> Alright, well let's go ahead and get him off the tray. As one of Darkland's servants, Gravedigger spends his time scouring the earth for potential soldiers for Malbolge's army. Under the cover of night, Gravedigger unearths graves in search of the perfect warrior. After a successful hunt, Gravedigger can be found with his ever-present swarm of cohorts preparing for their master, Malbolge. You know, it just occurred to me, if Gravedigger spends all his time robbing graves, what do his little minions do while he's off doing that? Okay, let's do the ending one more time. And one, two, three. If, if you're feeling, feeling really scared, scared and you don't know what to do, do listen to us for the graveyard review. Listen to us for the graveyard, graveyard, review. Review. The graveyard review. We are the Grave Diggers Graveyard Review. That was amazing. Great job, everyone. <laughs> well, that was unexpected. Anyway, now that we know a bit more about the Gravedigger and his little minions, let's take a closer look. With all the bandages all over him, to me, the Gravedigger actually looks more like a mummy, with the bandages falling off of his body, but still being on his head and arms. The bulk of his head sculpt is the bandages, uh, but there is this weird giant steel brace sticking out of his head with bolts. I I'm really not sure what that is, but it does look pretty cool. And here on his ribs, he has a similar structure. This almost looks like a rusted exoskeleton rib cage. And then the texturing on the bandages is actually really fantastic. His skin is also sunk in and disgusting. This is another excellent sculpt from McFarlane. Gravedigger's left hand is designed to hold his included shovel, and his right hand is in this interesting claw position, but he can still hold some accessories with it. And here in his forearm, he's got this leather gauntlet looking thing with silver buckles. It's pretty good. Also, he's got a silver belt buckle. I like the way the belt looks and how it goes down into this cloth loincloth with dirt and blood splattered all over it. Underneath, he has on black pants with some more bandages wrapped around his thigh. And then he's got a flashlight. Uh, that's a weird accessory for this guy. I don't know why, but that makes me laugh a lot. Gravedigger's boots look like rusted metal with these big platforms on the bottom, and that makes me think of Frankenstein's monster. And then here, this kneecap is way bigger because, like I told you, McFarlane hates symmetrical feet. As we come around to the back of the figure, you can see a couple peg holes in his back, and that's for pegging in his included gravestone, which is basically a backpack. Now we're going to take a look at Gravedigger's articulation. Here at the knee, he has a 90 degree bend. And then here at his hip, he also has a 90 degree bend, but it goes forward. The uh, leg actually will not go back at all. Here at the shoulder, he has a joint that'll go up and around full 360 if you wanted it to. And then here at the elbow, he has a 90 degree bend. Not bad. Now, this wrist only will rotate. I'm not sure why the other hand doesn't rotate, but that one does. Then finally here at the head, he can look left and he can look right. And that is it. That covers all 10 points of articulation for Gravedigger. Now we're going to take a look at Gravedigger's included accessories. This is his shovel. It is uh, pretty nice looking. It's got some weird details on the handle and the spade looks nice. So overall, I like it. 
It's designed to fit in his left hand, and when he's holding it like this, it kind of looks like he's taking a break. Gravedigger also has this gravestone, which is technically a backpack. Uh, it looks pretty cool. You can see some cracking and nice texture to it. And you can see right here there are two pegs, and that's how you put it on it. Like I said, it pegs into him just like a backpack. And these holes here are for pegging in some of his included accessories, and we'll check that out in a second. But first, we're going to go ahead and put the tombstone on his back. It's pretty easy. You just stick the pegs in the hole, and there you go. Now he's carrying around his tombstone backpack, which cannot possibly be comfortable. Gravedigger has a second shovel, which is a lot smaller than his first, but to me, it's quite a bit more realistic. Here on the handle, it has two pegs, and that allows you to peg it into the tombstone backpack. Now, from the back, this looks really weird, and it makes no sense to have a shovel plugged into the back of a tombstone. But, when you see them from the front, it's very 90s. There was always, like, big backpacks and gear hanging out of them. That was just a 90s thing. Here is Gravedigger's pickaxe, and it's got a string of human body parts on it that actually pegs into the handle. As we get closer, you can see their skulls and all kinds of different bones. This is made out of soft rubber, and it's pretty gross. There's even a spine right here. I love it. <laughs> and the pickaxe is pretty cool looking as well. It's colored like silver and got some neat details wrapped around the handle and whatnot. The two pegs there allow you to plug it into the back of the tombstone backpack as well. So we'll go ahead and stick it on there and see what it looks like. One of my favorite parts of the pickaxe being on the back of the tombstone like this is the body parts dangle down like so, and it looks really cool from the front. Again, it makes no logical sense, but it looks awesome. Gravedigger also has this lantern, which I really like. Uh, I think the handle looks fantastic. You can see the little adjuster for the flame there. There's uh, weathering details around the top. And in general, I love this. I think it's my favorite accessory out of all the things he's included with. He holds it by the handle in his claw hand, as you can see. And even though it's not actually held tight, it still stays in there really well. Now we're going to take a look at the Gravekeeper's little singing minions. Uh, these guys are cool. They have wire frames inside of them so you can pose them around all the way through their body, their arms, their tail, everything. And they're pretty similar in the body, but their faces are all unique. So this guy's got this fun little jaw. And then this blue guy, he's got the red eyes and he's kind of grinning. He might have the most boring face though. But this green guy is awesome. He's a cyclops with like the cool teeth. I really like the coloring on this one. I, I think he's my favorite. Now this guy, he actually has the most human looking face of the bunch. Even though he is still pretty scary looking. And lastly, we have the red one who has these super cool horns up on top of his head. And I think he is my second favorite. The copyright information for Gravedigger is located on the bottom of his left foot. 1997 McFarlane Toys. Here's a quick look at Gravedigger's file card. If you'd like to read it, pause now. Also note that this one has light skin. And once again, I've got the gray skin variant. And now for our He-Man size comparison. As you can see, Gravedigger absolutely towers over He-Man. Although I have a feeling if they had any type of fight, it would be really bad for Gravedigger. He'd have to have all his minions jump in, and even then, I don't think he's got a chance. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my toy retrospective for Gravedigger from the 1997 Spawn Toy Line by McFarlane Toys. We are now six episodes into the return of the four weeks of Halloween. And we only have two episodes left with one modern Monday next Monday and then the big finale on Wednesday with Creed's Collection. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please leave a thumbs up. And if you have any thoughts, please leave a comment. I love reading and responding to them. And while you're at it, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I would really appreciate it and would help my channel grow. I do a retrospective on a toy for my vintage collection every Wednesday. So I hope to see you next week and every week after here on Creed's Collection.